Welcome back. Uh, welcome to this third part of uh, converting a Blender object uh, into a topologic building or a cell complex in order to do um, energy analysis on it. Now, for this last part, um, I looked at how much work it will be to uh, create an energy model and uh, simulate it. Uh, and do it correctly, and assign all the dictionaries and all of that. And it's quite quite a long process. So as you can see here, um, this is the part that we have done before, almost up to here. But then uh, this middle part here, which is not very well organized, I must admit, is about creating the dictionary. So I will show you that. And then this part in green, which is really only uh, three sections, is about the uh, topologic energy. It's about actually creating the energy model, simulating it, and then querying the results. So it's actually not very complex to do the energy model, but there's a lot of preparation work uh, that is needed. If you would like to have uh, custom uh, space types or different space types for every cell in your cell complex, and this is what I'm doing here. It used to be in, pre in kind of previous work with, with, en with topologic energy, especially on dynamo, is that I would just simply allow one uh, default space type, like a medium office, and that would be applied to all the spaces in the building. Uh, in the new topologic energy for, for Blender, you can actually get the space types from the template uh, OSM file, and then assign, choose from one of them, and then assign them to different spaces. And I'll show you how we, we do that. So instead of uh, going through and building this graph uh, node by node, which will take a long time, I admit, uh, I'm going to give you a tour of it. And uh, the actual file is available on GitHub, so you can download it and investigate it and build it again if you would like to. So let me orient you uh, towards it in kind of uh, in part. Uh, we will leave the addition of the apertures, those windows that you see here, we're going to leave that till the very, very end. So we'll see uh, how we do that here. So um, the first thing is to get the OSM template. So uh, it's really important to have a good template. This you can create in the Open Studio application, or you can download it from our GitHub. Uh, this one is for offices, and it has all types of space types for offices, like small office, large office, medium office, uh, kitchen, staircase, lobby, IT room, etc., all sorts of uh, different uh, space types. We're going to be using two space types out of it. We're going to use a large office for the perimeter, and we're going to use a stair core for uh, the core uh, cell that we have here. So after we um, get a file path, which will point to a uh, OSM file in the in the folders. Uh, we have a uh, a node called Energy Model by Imported OSM. Now all these nodes that are related to topologic energy, you can find them under Topologic uh, Energy Model here, and there are now these uh, methods, and hopefully we will add more. But as you can see here. We can uh, create an energy model by an imported OSM. We can create it by topology, which is you know from the cell complex, which is the main way to do it. We can get the default construction set. So it's important in your template that you have default construction set, default schedule set, uh, which we don't use here, actually, I believe. Uh, we can export to OSM at any point. So if you've added the geometry, you can just simply export it to OSM and continue your work in the Open Studio application. And then you can query the results. Uh, you can run the simulation. So that comes actually first. So you run the simulation first, and then you query the results. Uh, as I said, you can get all the space types from here. You can get also the SQL file so that you can feed it into the uh, query. Uh, and then you can get back the topologies if you want to get back the geometry out of the energy model. All right. So we. Uh, as I said, we get this OSM template, uh, so we get an energy model uh, out of it. Uh, so what we are doing here is we are getting all the space types. So you notice that we have uh, 13 uh, space types, and we flatten them. And out of that, we are uh, choosing uh, 
index one so we're getting a, an item out of that list and so we are choosing the stair here the office stair which is for zone for thermal zone four to eight and we are getting a large office as well so we just simply can you know um, click through the indices until we find the one we want and we just simply leave it at that index so these are the two uh, names that we are interested in now what do we do with these names what we do is we create a dictionary and we assign it to the cell so this dictionary is going to have a name which is the name of the cell and then the type the type of the cell and this will be read by topologic uh, later on so we're creating these two lists two strings name and type and we're using that as the key to the dictionary so as you can see here, uh, we are creating uh, a stair core as a name, and this will be a value, and we are joining that in with the type that is called uh, office stair. So this will be the name, stair core, and the type will be 189-2009 office stair uh, CZ4-8. So this will be the actual uh, result of it if you can see it here it's just a string or a list of two strings excuse me this is the name and this is the type so these are the values and the keys are uh, name and type as you can see here so those will match two and two so this is a, a topologic um, node that's called dictionary by keys values and it creates a dictionary that has these two keys and these two values and then we go ahead and if we go all the way here you'll notice that we are setting uh, the cell dictionary so we give it the uh, cell and I'll show you where that is coming from this is this blue cell here this is the core and we give it that dictionary and that is now assigned and then the rest the 28 if you remember there are 29 cells in this uh, tower so one cell gets the staircase and the other 28 they get the uh, office uh, dictionary so as you can see here all of this here in this uh, frame is creating uh, the names of the offices so all of this stuff here is basically saying I want office 001 02 up to 28 so I'm creating a, a name for it and you can see them uh, right here And uh, so you'll see here, this is the name, office underscore zero one. And then the type is 189-2009 office, whole building, large office, thermal zone four to eight. So we create this list. Uh, it's a list of lists, obviously. And we create dictionaries uh, out of it. So again, we have those dictionaries here. We have 28 dictionaries coming out. And then we assign them to the 28 cells. Now, how do we get the uh, cell? This comes from the cell complex that we just built. If you remember, we did uh, cell complex by faces here. We get the cells out of it, the subtopologies here, and we get a list item. So what I did here is I uh, started going through the, the cells in order to find which one is the uh, core. It so happened that it is the very first one, so it's zero. So list item number one is the core, and I can I can show it and hide it. It kind of like shows over here, so I'm going to hide it just to kind of check which cell is is the core. And then the nice thing about list item is that it gives you all the other things that have not been selected in the second outlet here, the second socket. So one is the staircase, and 28 are the offices, so 29 in total. So that's perfect. We can take those and assign them correctly uh, later on here for the set dictionary. All right, so now we have these 29 cells and they have dictionaries, but these have nothing to do now with the cell complex. We, you know, we extracted them out of the cell complex, we imbued them with the dictionaries, but now we need to actually transfer those dictionaries into the cells that belong to the cell complex that are actually part of the cell complex. So we have a node in topologic called transfer dictionaries. And the way it works is that you give it uh, 
sources and you give it a sink. Sources is where the information is coming from, and the sink is where the information is going to be deposited. Usually there are multiple sources and a single sink. So what are those? So the sources are the cells, so 29 cells, and the sink is the cell complex. It is um, intelligent enough to find out that, oh, if I have cells, I will try to find a matching cell in the cell complex, and I will transfer the dictionary or the dictionaries found in the cells to the correct cell uh, in the cell complex. It does that uh, by itself. So we can, we can uh, definitely do that. I'm not sure why transfer face dictionaries is clicked. I believe this is a mistake, but right now I'm not going to bother with it. I don't believe there are any face dictionaries. And so after that, after we have transferred the, the dictionaries or yeah, from the cells to the cell complex, the last step is to add these apertures, you know, these blue windows that you see here. So we postponed this. I took it out of from the original kind of workflow and postponed it until after I have set the dictionary. So I, again, very similar. I took the cell complex, which is the resulting one. Now this cell complex has all the dictionaries, brought in the original seven apertures, uh, you know, if you remember from the cluster that we have created. And this is way back in the original tutorial that we did here with the uh, shading, uh, oops, no, it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be called shading. Hold on one second, please. Uh, where are the windows? One second, am I making a mistake here? Oh, because it came in correctly. Uh, play the apertures. Now the apertures is correct. So these are the apertures since I'm hiding them and showing them here. So this is the final cell complex. Uh, from stone. Da, da, da. Okay. I think I'm. Did I go to the wrong? I think I went to the wrong uh, subtopologies because I have seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I will then uh, pause and fix this because this should not be the shading plane. I'm just trying to understand where are the, so the cell complex must already have the apertures assigned from before. That's kind of interesting. I'm going to not do that and just simply do the subtopologies. Ah, right, okay, so the cell complex has had the apertures assigned from before. So even though I assigned the wrong ones, they didn't get assigned to anything because they don't match any faces, these things. They're not coplanar with any face. So uh, these uh, shading planes really have nothing to do with anything uh, unless uh, oh wait ah, I'm confusing myself right so this is called shading planes but it's actually the windows so this is a mistake from before so let's go ahead and change this yeah so this should be called windows I really apologize for that um, late in the day here uh, right so we do need those faces and uh, we should assign them so I'm just going to take this node closer to where it needs to be here a while and it will uh, assign the apertures correctly I'll 
fourth quarter seconds. All right. So it, it assigned them. So I will take these back where they belong. Like here. So, um, so now that we have the cell complex, it has all the dictionaries and it has all the apertures, what we do now is we create the energy model. So the energy model starts with a template energy model that we got from the OSM file. It uh, gets a weather file, a design day file, and then the building topology is the cell complex that we have just simply uh, been working with. And then the shading surfaces cluster are those dark blue uh, faces. And then floor levels are, I think they're still wrong because I, this, I'm using the old floor levels. It doesn't affect anything really, but the OSM file will be wrong. So what we really need to do is uh, fix the floor levels. Oops, sorry. Uh, let's see, where are the floor levels coming from? Uh, hold on one second. Where the floor levels are coming from. Uh, I think it's here, this range. Floor levels, yeah, sorry. Here. So uh, this one should, the step should be 4 and it should be from 0 to 28, right? So, um, so 0 to 28 and then it's going to run again. Oh, I should have turned it off. Sorry, it's going to run the simulation one more time. Apologies for that. I need to turn it off. And I'll show you how to turn it off because run simulation has a checkbox that says run. And if you uncheck it, you can save yourself a lot of time by not running the simulation every time you change an input parameter. So while, while it's doing that, let me show you the uh, end result. So it will save uh, the file uh, in the folder that you have specified. This one I'm calling it uh, delete me right here. And it will put a timestamp. So as you can see here, uh, I've been creating a lot of these uh, energy simulations. So let's open this one. And here is the uh, OSM file, uh, the final one. So let's double click it. It will open in the Open Studio application. And this is a good way to check whether the geometry is correct, whether all the information is correct in there. So we'll just go immediately to the geometry and check our work. We can hide and show the walls. Uh, let's not make it perspective, and we can rotate it and see the work. And you'll notice that it has the correct shading devices, has the correct uh, windows as we have specified, and all the files are, are correct in terms of their, um, or all the surfaces are correct in terms of their orientation, etc. So uh, we can. Remove these things, uh, show roofs, uh, show windows, show doors. We don't have any doors. Shading devices are correct. And then uh, if you don't see the wireframe, of course, you don't see anything. All right. So let's see if it has uh, finished here. No, it's still going, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, it's quite going a little bit, taking too long, so I'm going to pause again. Okay, so it finished, took a few minutes. Um, as I said, it's unfortunate that I had forgotten uh, this checkbox here, so I'm going to turn it off. And what happens here then is that uh, for the floors, 
uh, they should really be from 0 to 28 in increments of 4 meters. So we should change that here. Um, and then you can give it any name you want. You can give it any type you want. And then you have to give it a default space type. So again, I grab the space types from the template OSM, and I just choose one. So I go to index 10, and uh, that is the medium office, and I assign that. In our case, all the spaces have a space type, so the default doesn't apply. But just in case you have missed one, it will be a medium office. Uh, after that, you uh, tell it where the north axis is, and zero means positive y. Uh, if you put a glazing ratio of zero, it will just simply take into account uh, the actual apertures that you have uh, bottled onto the building. If you put a glazing ratio uh, above zero, then the surfaces that do, you know, do not have a dictionary that says what the glazing ratio is uh, will, um, will get the default glazing ratio, basically. And then you can set the cooling temperature and the heating temperature. This is for a kind of a default uh, air handling system. Uh, and you'll notice here that uh, we're getting a model, an Open Studio model. That's what we call an energy model. And then we actually go ahead and simulate it. And in order to simulate it, we feed it the energy model. We feed it the weather file uh, path. We feed it the path to the Open Studio binary. So this is the OpenStudio.exe file. And then we give it a, an, an output folder of our choosing. And uh, when we click Run, it will actually run. And it will give us back the energy model. But now this energy model has an SQL file attached to it, which is the results of the simulation. Based on that, uh, we can get now the uh, information from the file. And these are the same as uh, the report, so if you, or the run, excuse me. So if you go to run and we go to this one, E plus tables, energy plus tables, you can get information from here back into uh, Blender. So we get the information back, and these are the values, and then what we do is we match them uh, with, a, uh, with a color. So we have something called uh, color by value in range. So we give it the actual values, with the minimum value, the maximum value. We decide on a uh, transparency. If we want a transparency, so I'm giving it a 0 0.6 here. And then we match it with the 29 uh, cells that we have uh, from the cell complex. Right? So these are the ones that come from the cell complex. Um, and that's it, really. Uh, you'll notice here, uh, so in order to match them, we're getting the row name. So the row name is exactly the name of the space type, the thermal zone. So the row name comes from the cells, and we uh, join it in, and we add the word thermal to it. So we get uh, the staircase, and we get all the offices, and that's how the SQL query kind of gets us the information in the correct order. And this, this is coming from, obviously, uh, the results here from the cells. Uh, so we get the uh, cells from the cell complex, and then uh, we find their names, the dictionary names. We add the word thermal zone to them here, as you can see. And then uh, now we have the correct names to query the SQL file. And that's it. And then we get colors. So these are uh, colors based on the values. And we feed that into the uh, color of the, of the uh, faces. So all the faces of the cell get, they get that kind of color. So you can see uh, the end result here. Uh, and that's it, really. That's what gets uh, rendered at the very end. Uh, thank you. Uh, apologies for the glitches. Obviously, this is a very uh, complex process, not for the faint of heart, obviously. But you can definitely model and get energy results open source, free, 
not pay anybody, uh, and using a gold standard, which is Energy Plus. Thank you for watching.